The mayor publicly stated your membership's rejection to the tentative agreement may lead to increased taxes for the citizens of Jacksonville. Is that true? It, that is a ridiculous statement. If you look at the city's budget, the city put aside in this fiscal year by balancing the budget, they put aside $12.7 million. The mayor's talking about $3.3 million. $3.3 million in a $1 billion budget is not in any shape or form going to increase the taxes of the citizens of Jacksonville unless the mayor chooses to do so for some pork barrel project of his. I don't know. What I do know is this. The mayor has no budget shortfall or budget gap in the budget. As a matter of fact, the money was set aside in this fiscal year to cover that $3.3 million just in case, just in case, none of the, none of the bargaining units took these pay cuts. They had $12.7 million set aside. We're not talking about touching the reserve fund. We're talking about taking the money from a fund that was set aside specifically for this purpose in case it didn't happen. The issue here is that the mayor at no point, when we sat down at the table, the only thing we asked the administration was to please show us that there was a budget shortfall or a budget gap in the budget. If he showed us where the money wasn't there, the members and I would be more than willing to continue to sacrifice as we do now for the citizens of Jacksonville. The issue here is that our forensic consultant who looked at the city's budget and the funds was able to find that there's plenty of money in this fiscal year to cover this $3.3 million and it will never, never ever affect the citizens of Jacksonville. The money has been set aside. What would your response be then to Mayor Payton's statement that your membership is acting with a sense of entitlement by rejecting the agreement? Our members, we go back to the, to the issue we talked about and we talk about fairness. We want to be treated fairly. This is where I think this comes to the crux of where the difference between the administration and our membership is fairness. When you talk about fairness, and the mayor talks about being fair and running the city as a business, that was his whole mantra when he ran for mayor. If you run the city like a business, you reward your employees that save you money, you don't punish them. Let me tell you what this mayor's doing. Let's look at health insurance. He wants us to pay 5% more in health care costs. Well, if you look at health insurance and the usage of the plan, my members, because it's broken down by bargaining unit, this comes from the mayor's office itself. These numbers, these are not my numbers, it's the mayor's office numbers, shows that our members, for every dollar we put in, we spend 80 cents. Now, you look at the other bargaining unit members within the city of Jacksonville, the other general employees, and for every dollar they put in, some of the bargaining unit members spend $1.10, $1.20. So, what that shows is that they are using us to supplement everybody else's health insurance by keeping the cost down. And what we asked and we said was, be fair to us, reward us, don't punish us. Well, how do you reward us? Well, instead of making us pay like everybody else, leave us alone. We should be rewarded, not punishing, not being, not being punished because we're a healthier group of individuals that's saving the city money. But that's not the way the mayor looks at it. He wants, it's, it's almost like a socialist. He wants everybody to feel the pain, even the ones that are helping the others not have to feel as much of the pain. The other bargaining units, I guess, accepted pay cuts, but obviously your membership has declined to do so. What would your comments be about that? Well, I think, you know, the mayor said he doesn't understand what planet we're coming from and that we have this attitude of self-entitlement. And that's not true. The basic issue here is that the mayor and his staff were unable at any point to prove to us that there was any type of shortfall 
or any type of budget gap in that budget. The money's there. Once again, our forensic accountant, who has 35 years of experience doing this throughout the state, was able to find the dollars. Once again, we go back to that the money was set aside in this fiscal year just in case some of the bargaining units did not take this pay cut or accepted it. We don't feel we have a self-entitlement uh, issue. Uh, we understand, and I think the public understands, that the job we do is different than the jobs they do. You know, we go out here every day, and we understood when we took this job that our lives are on the line. If you look at the numbers, this year alone, officer involved death, line of duty deaths for officers are up over last year, over the year of the over the prior year. So this job is not getting any easier or any safer. It's getting more dangerous. Not only that, over the past two years, the sheriff's office has had to cut its budget each year over the past two years. So we continue to do more with less. We continue to have less police officers per 1,000 uh, citizens of population. We continue by the mayor's own numbers to spend less on public safety compared to other major cities in, in Florida. So it's not a sense of self-entitlement. It's a sense of be fair to us for the job we do when we put our lives on the line for the citizens of Jacksonville, all we're asking is, based on what we do and knowing that the city has no budget shortfall or budget gap, then we're not asking you to give us a pay raise in these tough economic times, as the mayor says. All we're asking is for a zero and zero. Leave things as they are. That's all we're asking for.